Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And on these Wednesday videos, what we typically do is draw a sample at random to taste blind from our international pool of sipping spirits. We call them wildcard Wednesday videos around here. That's a little bit of inside baseball. But today you can clearly see that's not what's happening. Nope. So it's what, a wild card for the wild card Wednesday. Exactly. You know, we we Keep leave ourselves Keep room to have fun here. So these are samples that were sent to us from Barrel Craft Spirits. We have a little bit of a relationship with Barrel Craft Spirits. They did send us these free of charge, although we are under no obligation to make a review, much less a positive review. However, I'm sure since they sent them, they would prefer us to make a review. The only reason we said yes to this is because we do tend to like Barrel Craft Spirit we products. Do, especially their finished products, which I believe some of these are, right? Well, they are, and we have had some of the finished products like Seagrass, yeah. Barrel Vantage, Dovetail, and we do like those, especially Seagrass and Vantage. Seagrass. But we've never had any of their finished private barrels mm. like these are. And I have personally wondered to myself, you know, you can get... Self? Self. You can get Barrel Batch 33 at this time for 90 bucks or seagrass or vantage or dovetail for 80 or 90 bucks and in most markets are these private releases worth paying a little bit more for What's 110 the... okay so you're paying 20 more bucks it's you know it's a little bit of a premium so that's really what this is all about we wanted to okay. taste these see if we think they're worth more money than the baseline product which we warmed up with in glass one mm -hmm. just before hitting record and so we're going to go down the line and we're going to see what's up we'll be honest with you we're under no obligation. Frankly, we have enough whiskey. We don't need people sending us more. We only said yes because we're genuinely interested in this ourselves. You yep. may be interested as well. With that said, let's go ahead and get into this first glass. Okay. And while Aaron is nosing and tasting it, I'm going to tell you about it. Tell us about it, Josh. So, this is Barrel Whiskey's private release, whiskey finished in St. Agrestus, 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 Brooklyn, Amaro casks. Oh, wow. Okay. And this is the DJA2 blend, 123 proof. And this is Kentucky and Indiana bourbon distillate that has been finished in the Amaro casks. So, yeah, very interesting. Kentucky and Indiana only. No Tennessee in this blend, okay. which is something that they do tend to use a lot and something that some people don't like. What do you think about I've this? I've got some thoughts. It's, it's a little thinner than I thought it would be. For the proof point? For the proof point, yeah. It's pretty thin. It kind of tastes a little bit. It's like a light Christmas. Like, I don't know if it's clove. Not super clovey, but there's a little bit of that Christmas spice, dare I say. I think it, it has the flavor of clove, but not the spice of clove. And that's why I think it's Christmas light. Wow, that is super interesting. Not yeah. at all what I expected. Same. On the nose, it smelled a little Christmas spicy. Mm -hmm. And it smelled a little bit... Um, very classic bourbony. Like the finish didn't come across huge on the nose. However, on the palate, it's definitely there. It's Christmas. You're definitely getting that Christmas spice. Clove, nutmeg, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff is wrapped up in there. Yeah. I don't think it's particularly thin. It's kind of lingering around and sticking to my palate. The, the, the finish lasts, but the liquid is thin. That's what I mean when I say something the is thin. The body of it, yeah. The actual liquid in the glass is not a thick liquid. Yeah. Oh, now that I'm going back to the nose, I'm getting like Christmas cookie vibes. Mm. Yeah, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Like a little bit of snickerdoodle-esque-ness. No, that's not a Christmas cookie. Is it not? It probably is. Oh, no, I'm I don't, sorry. I don't, equate, I don't equate snickerdoodles with Christmas I'm thinking cookies. gingerbread. Oh. I always get those two confused. Gingerbread is absolutely. I don't know why, but your sister makes some awesome gingerbread cookies, and I'm getting that on the nose now. She does, yeah. One more sip for me. It's good, I like it, but I don't think it's gonna be my favorite out of the three. I'm almost positive about that. Granted, this is, we're going into this on personal preferences alone. Yeah, it sounds real. like to you, you would rather pay $90, $80, $90 for the regular barrel bourbon batch than you would 110 for the Amaro finish. For that finish particular, yeah. It's yeah. good though, I just wouldn't pay any extra for it. Yeah, if I would say if you like finished whiskeys and these are all gonna be finished in some form or fashion, mm -hmm. Going into the first one, would I pay $110 for this one? Personally, no, I wouldn't. But if it were the same price as this, I might consider it if I already had this. Yeah. Let's get into the next one as Aaron noses and tastes this. This doesn't say that it's finished in anything. This is just the GXA1 blend. Mm -hmm. 119 proof, so we're stepping down in proof a little bit here. And it does have a uh, breakdown of the years on this. So this is 75% five-year 
15% seven year, 5% nine year, and 5% 14 year. But if you read the back, this is Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana, and it is blended using their techniques. And then it is married together in an empty bourbon barrel. So this is recasked in a used bourbon barrel is it? to let the blend marry together. So very interesting. It's pretty dry and not sweet. This is really interesting on the nose. Like I would not think that this was a recasked bourbon. Mm -mm. It just smells like bourbon to me, mm -hmm. a tempered sweetness bourbon. There's not a lot of fruit in the nose on this glass. It's warm though. It, there's a Kentucky Man. hug happening. Mm. Yep. This to me smells like really classic Kentucky bourbon. And mm -hmm. it's a blend of Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee. So keep that in mind. This will be really interesting having just come off of this to warm up. Is it worth 20 more dollars to get well, I this? Went, I went back to it. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, I did not I know. compared this to... So what do you think? How do they compare? Um, The first glass, what is it? 33, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. That's way sweeter. That's more like bourbon because this definitely hits me more like a rye. It's good, but it's not as sweet as um, batch 33. Oh, wow. It's warm though. Like it, yeah. the finish, it grows, like it builds on itself, which is yeah. kind of impressive. I would honestly say if you like barrel vantage, if you've tried barrel vantage okay. and you like that and you want something that is akin to that experience, not quite as woody, but a little bit more fruity sweet. Yeah. This is your glass for that. It's more like um like a red fruit. It's not it's not yeah. sugar sweet, but it's like a red fruit. And dang y'all, as I'm talking, it's like warm. It's setting in. It's yeah. warm down here. <laughs> yeah. It's it's got like this this nice fruit sweetness. Yeah. It's very sweet, but it's not sickeningly cloyingly it's sweet. It's not sugary sweet. It's just like got a sweet undertone. Right. But then you get a little bit more woodiness than compared to the regular barrel batches, which is are more like sugary, bourbony sweet. Mm -hmm. So this is a, actually a really interesting product. Yeah. I actually do think this is worth 20 more dollars than the regular barrel bourbon batches. However, I will say I would probably start with this. And then if you have one of these and you like it, then I would go to this mm. because this does have Tennessee in the blend. And when Tennessee is blended in well, and this is for sure probably the 5% that's the 14 year component of this. It's probably very little Tennessee. It could be the other 5% that's a nine year as well. That might be, those both might be Tennessee, but that's only 10% Tennessee whiskey making up the blend. When it's done right, Tennessee whiskey in a blend can give it this kind of candied orange note mm. that I get pretty prevalent and this is done right. Like it's not Flintstone vitamin E that a lot of people talk about with George Dickel Tennessee whiskey. This is just nice kind of mm -hmm. candied orange laced in with the rest of the fruit. So let's go so ahead. So when, when they say it's Tennessee whiskey, people automatically assume it's Dickel. Is it automatically Dickel? It's changing more as more places in Tennessee start okay. to source. But for right now, yes, George Dickel okay. is who a lot of people source from when they source Tennessee whiskey. Gotcha. So I'm actually the most excited and this is really the reason why I said yes to this to, to get these samples in. So this is uh, oh, a okay. barrel whiskey private release finish in Ruby Port Barrels. And we tend to like port finish whiskeys. Um, this is blend DJX2, which is cryptic code names. Um, it's like we're dealing with Maker's Mark as well with all their license plate numbers, FAE02 and BRT01. Mm, so many numbers and letters. This is 123.9 proof. This is Kentucky and Indiana only, so no Tennessee in this blend. And this is, uh, again, the private blend of or private release whiskeys finished in unique barrels for added complexity, cast strength, and again, Ruby Port Barrel. What's so, the proof on that? 123? 123.9. So almost 124. Wow. I would not guess that. It is, dare I say, smooth to drink. Yeah. As far as it's not sharp, it's not burny. I would not guess it's 123. I need I need to take another sip though and see if it builds. Oh man, this smells so good on the nose. Like the problem with uh, when we do any kind of reviews that are not blind is that it's hard not to have preconceived notions and bias. So when yep. I see Ruby Port, I immediately think it's going to be good. However, I do tend to prefer port finished rise more than port finished bourbons, but this smells incredible. So I'm going to say that this is good. This drinks under proof and the second sip is a little more oaky than the first sip, mm -hmm. but it's pretty, it's pretty tame all the way through. I think like 
good viscosity, good finish, but it's not the longest finish. I think the second glass finish had like the most awesome finish. Oh man. Flavor wise, this is really good. Oh man, yeah. It's easy, I, I would call this an easy sipper, even though it's 123 point whatever yeah. proof. That's really good. So here's what's going on right now. If I were gonna critique this glass, and I'm going to, cause we're doing a review, is that it is a little simplistic, mm -hmm. especially on the nose. The nose is kind of just the thing that it is. So. Maybe that's a testament to barrel balancing everything really well, or maybe it's just not that dynamic, but I kind of just get this kind of one conglomeration note of this like sweetness that mm -hmm. joins in together with the bourbon. And I'm getting that on the flavor as well. Yeah. However, that's not always a bad thing. I don't always want to dissect my whiskey, yeah. granted, me, most of the time, I don't want to dissect my whiskey at all, um, just because that's just how I am. I know that's fun for people, um, especially you. So this would be a nice, easy pour that you could just sit down and you won't have to overthink it, but you could still enjoy it. Yeah, the flavor on this is really good. It's sweet. You're getting that port cask finish, that dessert wine. You know, it's kind of coming mm -hmm. through on top of the bourbon and just blending in with the bourbony sweetness. But now that I go back to it on the nose after having a sip, I get like this really beautiful char note. It's like a, it's like an oaky, it's just the charred oak. That's part of the initial base whiskey, I'm sure. But the way that the port cast finishing works together with the baseline whiskey is beautiful in this glass. And the finish is fairly strong on that. It is, no, as you said, hang on. It is, as you said, smooth, no round, no sharp edges. Mm -hmm. It's, it's round, but it is a dense encompassing sphere of flavor. Would you pay extra money for it? I would that one, yeah. I, I really like port I finish. Would. I don't think I, there's enough there for me to pay more. Yeah. Although the second one I would. So we're both, this one's not for us mm -hmm. with that particular Amaro finishing. We're both a yes on this one mm -hmm. and we're a house divided on this one. So there you go. This kind of stuff, I think on paper, if you look at it and say, do I like Amaro finished whiskeys? And if you do, you'll probably like this a lot. Do I like double barreled whiskeys? toasted whiskeys, double oaked whiskeys, finished in extra wood, Yeah, you're probably gonna like this. And if you like port cast finished stuff, you're probably gonna like this. I think this is a really interesting experiment yeah. to go through and see, is this stuff actually worth paying up for? I've always had that question for myself. And I think the answer as with anything in whiskey is, it depends on your palate and your own personal preferences. But what I'm happy to see happening here is that barrel craft spirits craftsmanship of blending mm -hmm. and the way they put together whiskeys if that's something that you're at all familiar with i think you can rest safely knowing that if you're going to pay up for one of these private release finish whiskeys you're going to get that same level of craftsmanship yeah they're they're all they're all well crafted <clears throat> let that be known yeah. some of them are just not to our flavor profile like the others are right so just pick based on your flavor profile and the finishing you might like and it's probably gonna be a pretty safe bet that it's gonna be a really good whiskey and if you think this is a really good video go ahead and like it and if you like the way we do content over here it's not usually these straightforward reviews like this it's usually blind tastings but you can go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell while you're down there to be notified when we do our once a month live streams. It'll help you out a ton. The dates float around, but we would love for you to join us for a pour. Absolutely. And thank you to Barrel Craft Spirits for sending this to yeah. us. We Thanks, really Carol. appreciate it. Thank you for letting us just kind of play around with the whiskey. Yeah. And uh, that's it for today. Be good to each other. And until next time, cheers. cheers.